Hello everyone and welcome. I'm finally back to posting and creating content for this channel and I'm really excited to show you the video I've been working on which is my 2022 bullet journal setup. It's been a couple of rough months to say the least. I've been quite busy with school and my master classes and I felt very overwhelmed with a lot of other stuff as well. So I stood back from filming and sharing my Bujo pages for the last two months. Now I finally feel like everything is settling down, so I decided to start from fresh with my New Year's spreads. For 2021, I used two different notebooks to be able to fit the whole year, and it was an experience that I didn't enjoy, if I'm being honest. So for 2022, I bought this notebook on Amazon. It has a few more than 200 pages, with 120 GSA in paper, and from my two years of bullet journaling, I can tell this one will last me until December. As for the main spreads I'll be showing you here, I'm starting off with the cover. I know some people like starting off from the first page with the space for your personal information, but I just skip directly to this setup. Lately, I've been really into the e scrapbooking style of created bullet journaling and this time I let myself loose with this one. I chose warm tones of orange, brown, yellow and a little bit of red as well and that was inspired by a particular sticker sheet which you can see peeking through in the right side of the screen. It's a sloth and floral sticker sheet and I picked it up from a mimosa store the one that's on my city doesn't really carry much stationery anymore, so whenever there's something new, I just want to snatch it. I didn't have a particular use for the stickers when I bought them, but it sparked something when I started planning for the next year. I thought it would look really cute to make something around them, and I can feel this overall aesthetic brings a sort of calmness and chill vibes, and honestly, I could use some of that for 2022. Another thing that pushed me into trying out a more scrapbooky style for the new year was the fact that I've been collecting a little too much stationery lately and I'm saying this as I just finished filming a stationery haul video. So you'll see me using a bunch of different washi tapes as well as stickers and ephemera. I had the right page to be the title page for 2022 and the left one is for my key. I'm creating a header for the title across the whole length on the left page and you'll see that I went for something like this for the rest of the setup. I just thought it would be easier to create a focus piece within each spread instead of trying to fill every corner with stationary bits. I also thought that this will take way less time to make since I'm not drawing or sketching anything. For a header, you just have a centerpiece and you build everything around it. This last goal was defeated though when I decided I wanted to stamp as much of the writing as possible. But it was okay though, it really wasn't that much extra time added and it was only fair to use the stamps to fit with the overall aesthetic of the spreads. I've been bullet journaling for over two years since October 2019 and I started off with the original system but nowadays I use a different set of symbols for my tasks. The ones I used for 2021 had been working just fine for me so I decided to keep them as they were and here's a close up so you can see what they look like. The following pages are going to be for my future log. I've seen a lot of people doing the Dutch door bucket look for their bullet journals when it comes to this thread, and I couldn't resist trying it out myself. It's not going to be the same as others I've seen, but it is mostly inspired by Amanda Ratchley yearly setup. I'm creating the header again on the left side and the greatest thing about this Dodge door thing is that I won't have to create another one for the other pages. The trick is laying out the sections for each month within a space that will allow you to cut out part of the page so you'll be able to see this part along with another bit of the last page you'll be using. 
I decided to feed four months on each side of the pages, so I ended up with three pages total, and it is in a vertical layout, so it aligns with my header. The feature log is one of my most used spreads, and that's why I give so much space for the single month. I literally put anything in here, let it be a due date for a homework, projects, test, um, even birthdays, appointments, events, so hopefully this is more than enough. I'm also combining this feature blog with my school calendar as well. For the second half of 2021, I started my master classes and it was my first time trying out some school spreads and during my first semester, I kept those separated but that didn't really work out, so this time I'm merging them. On the very left of the spread, I have the future blog header and on the very right, on the last page, I'll put the symbology box for the different type of events and school related stuff. I'm including a mini calendar corresponding to each month of the year and you'll notice that although I did place them with the dates right, I didn't erase nor bother to cover the extra days for some of the months, so they all have 31 days. The calendar stamps that I have are all full months and the easiest way to fix that is by just wiping off the ink from the unnecessary numbers or maybe by going over with a white gel pen or with whiteout. But in the end, it's a detail I'm completely fine with letting it go, so you know, I just didn't want to put much effort into it. What I did next was <laughs> honestly not necessary. Since I stamped the mini calendars, I wanted the headers for the month to somehow stand out from them, since I'm also stamping those. My fix was to add a color background, and I just don't understand why I didn't go with a soft color marker instead of cutting little pieces of paper to size and then gluing them one by one. I think this was the part that took me the longest to finish from the whole setup, but I guess I was just going with the flow of the scrapbooking and the collaging and you know, new notebook, new year, new setup. I wasn't really thinking, was I? You can see that the stamping was also quite repetitive and I was getting my fingertips so dirty because I needed to change the letter whenever I had to switch between them and then put them on the acrylic block. Later, I put a piece of damp paper on the side so I could wipe off the excess ink after I finished stamping with a particular letter and that made the whole process a lot easier and less annoying. You can also see that I tried to stamp all of the J's first and then all of the A's and then all of the N's so I didn't have to continuously switch between the same letters on every other page. If I had followed the month's letters in order, I don't even know how much time it would have taken me to finish this spread. The next bit was the symbology box on the right side and I didn't fill it in because I hadn't checked the actual school calendar yet so I just wanted to sit down with a little bit of more time to calmly see what I will need as signifiers and as coding for this part. We're almost done here but there's more stamping content. I thought the bottom section looked quite empty so to spice it up I added the number of the months with different color brush pens. Instead of an ink pad, I sometimes use my markers directly on the stamps when they're wood stamps specifically, and when they're clear silicone ones, I swatch the ink of my markers on a plastic bag and I picked up the ink from there. That's a nice way to change up the colors, even if you don't have the appropriate tool or media to do it. You'll see that I made a little mistake with October. I accidentally stamped a zero there as if it was followed by another number, but fortunately October is the 10th month of the year. There's an actual zero in there, so it was an easy fix. Just stamping a one on its left, although it was 
quite off-center, but it's okay, doesn't look that bad. And finally, we're on to another spread. Instead of having a goals page, I better have a space where I can write down some areas I want to improve on for the new year. Since I'm not a very goal-driven person, but I still think I should have some kind of resolutions to be motivated to keep going. And this is what I came up with last year. It did work quite well, and I do have another complimentary spread to set up later in the video. Two spreads, actually. You'll see them in a bit. Basically, this page is going to be divided into five different sections. Each of them will be a different category where I'll write down the main priorities within those areas I want to focus on. I did this last year as well, and I really liked it, although I fell through in the last quarter of the year, but this time I feel like now I know what will and will not work, especially because in those last four months, I simply had a different lifestyle and I need to prepare for what that actually means for me in terms of energy and time. I feel like this will make more sense as I advance onto the other spreads, but let's finish this one first. The layout is super simple, again I have the header across the length of the left side and then the rest of the spread is divided into 5 horizontal sections. There's enough space for me to write down at least 4 priorities and I will fill them in in another time. I don't feel shy about using what I have to write down here, but I personally would like to take my time to analyze a little bit of how my life went through in 2021 and read what I had to say in my 2021 budget pages. I guess I will talk about it more in depth in my 2021 bullet journal flip through, which is coming. Not very sure when, since I also want to upload my January setup as well as the January weeklies, but it is coming for sure. After finishing this one, next up is my habit spread, although it is not a tracker spread. Let me explain. I started bullet journaling specifically because I wanted to track certain stuff like exercise and expenses and with time that's still my main priority when it comes to my bullet journal. The weeklies definitely help with keeping myself organized but the habit tracking is actually what helps me find ways to improve. If you see my other monthly setups, I sometimes talk about the importance of habit tracking each month and I have to do it with a specific layout and tracking system. As time passed, I kept adding new habits to my spread and it came to a point where I had too much going on and the tracking was losing its point because I kept making mistakes when marking a certain day or I wasn't very consistent with what actually completing a habit meant for me. For example, uh, I will say that I completed my skincare routine because I put on everything that goes on my face. When actually, I wanted to only mark the days where I took care of my whole body, not only the face. And I think I just kept doing that because I only wanted to see a fuller tracker. So, this is the space where I'll write down what are the conditions to be able to mark a day with a complete habit. Currently, I'm tracking six different things, exercise, skincare routine, eating healthy, reading, posting, and days when I don't have a headache. I think this goes hand in hand with the focus spread because it's a way for me to keep an eye on those areas I previously mentioned. And the last spread on this video is another complimentary spread for the focus page. This one I call monthly challenges, which I also had in my last bullet journal. I had a fun time filling this one in, but as I mentioned before, in the last four months of 2021, I fell through with the challenges. I failed to pick one for the last four months and therefore I didn't exactly have something that held me accountable about keeping focus. I wasn't hard on myself for that one though because I understood that I needed to change something with my new lifestyle since I was coming back to school after five years. 
I wasn't aware of how much time a day of school takes away from you and of course the energy I needed to put on for a master's degree. So I want to try out this one again but with a new mindset. Before I had 12 boxes for each month where I would write down what the challenge was and the goal was to complete at least 21 days of whatever I had to do. The number of days comes from the belief that you can form a new habit if you are consistent for at least 21 consecutive days. That was working out quite well, but to be honest, I don't think I completed that on many of those challenges, but it's okay. The point was to try out new things, which I did. 21 days of something though wasn't very realistic for me to accomplish every single month, so at this time I will try to choose stuff that can be done maybe weekly or maybe twice a month. I want to be able to choose something and analyze how many days is actually viable for me to complete within one month, just so it can be a lot healthier and less stressful. The layout is not much different from what I did before, the only difference is that this time I put a small box in the bottom right corner of each monthly section. This space will serve to mark if I completed or not a challenge, or maybe put something like I have completed the challenge so I won't feel too bad if I didn't quite make it. These pages I'm showing you here add not all of them in my yearly setup. I have a couple of extra ones, I just didn't set them up in front of the camera because I thought this video would have been too long maybe, but I did finish some of them so I could show them quickly in the final flip through. Some of those extra pages are to school schedule spreads since I will be taking two different semesters in 2022, a space for me to have a completion of my monthly themes as well as a peer tracker and a weight and health tracker. Those last ones are very simple. I have a key for the peer spread, and then for the weight, I have a monthly check-in, and for the health spread, I have six categories, and I'll check them if I see some improvement in motivation, physical endurance, hygiene, sleep, headaches, and flexibility. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if so please leave a thumbs up or a comment below. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you everyone for watching, until the next one.